buy it on the set. We're doing a production here. We got a big old pinnacle in here. It is a monster too. It's like a 40 footer. And this fine gentleman come all the way down from Canada. Canada. It's pretty coach. Real pretty coach. So you got a most of the roof humps is there's like a 2021. And I think something grabbed it. And that's why we're putting the roof on. Something grabbed it or something like that on the other side. But this is your typical put more on, more on type of roof. Ooh, I don't like that already. That shoulder. That shoulder is over prominent, meaning that it's coming up at you. And it should be sloping down. So hopefully we can reuse some of these shoulders. Maybe we can readjust it. Sometimes they put so many staples in there, we cannot do that. But the uh, I know there's a patch on the other side. Got be on satellite dish. I got to deal with too. And I guess this thing. Uh, if you've got one of these, make sure inside there it's sealed. If you have this type of cap, there's a screw right here. There's a screw here. Screw there. Water will get down inside and it'll start leaking. So we get rid of all that anyways. So we're gonna make boots for them. We got a solar hookup right here. We're not putting solar on this one. Got all these wires here, so when we tear it up, we're gonna route those wires back down underneath, get them off the roof. And then, otherwise, I mean, it, it looks okay, but you can see, like right here, I mean, there's just not enough holding. It should have glued it down, and they very well may have. Um, sometimes glue doesn't wanna work with certain aluminum, you know, certain glues, that is. So we'll check it out. A lot of times they don't. So. But we did tear, take one up on a, um, I think it was a mold of sweets. And that one did. It was glued, but it just wasn't glued enough. But you can see all that slobbering. Man. So the sad part about this is that uh, they paint over all this stuff. So when we take this up, more than likely there's going to be a scar underneath there. And there's not much we can do. And it's going to look like this because our caulking line is going to be real clean. So there's not much we can do about that at all. So let's uh, let's go around the other side and then this is a cheap insert trim we put the good stuff in this stuff here it just goes on the track look at there wrong screws those are just drywall screws and so you can see the head sticking out so that's not the purpose you should have like a sheet metal head or a truss head or even a turn bar screw which has basically a sheet metal screw but the the head itself on the inside where the shank is is flat so it pulls in you know, and these aren't even glued either. These should be glued. And then the caulking up here is, you want to check it like this, and if you hear it crinkling, then you know you got some issues. If it, especially if it's silicone, it'll make like a crinkle sound. But that's all they do is just put all this cow pucky on here. So that's what they want to do. They want to exploit people's ignorance to roof systems. You can see a piece of it right there already coming up. See if I can zoom in right there. So, we will go around this way. But overall, there isn't anything like major besides this scar over here. Right here. This is why I come in for the roof right here. And these roofs are junk anyways. I mean, it's just smart to put a good roof on it. So, and you can see, underneath there is a foam gasket. All the debris, all the pollen, all the, you know, all that fallout is just going to end up on that gasket dries it out when it dries it out then it'll start leaking uh, you get yourself a, you know, it's chronic it's going to be real small it's not going to be flooding in uh, it's just going to be real small and then it'll start rotting around there that's why we everything needs to be up on a curb so when we put this up i mean it'll eliminate that whole problem for sure but that's the rv's industry's way of sealing your ac is just with that foam gasket that's it and the other thing about it is they use cheap gaskets so instead of it them having them punched out as a square right they don't they have this piece glued to this piece glued to this piece glued to this piece so now you got four corners that are potential leaks so but uh other than that it's it, it's your typical rv roof you know, like you said slobbered more on more on you can see right here so we don't like all that stuff for sure so we'll get it all all cleaned up I'd like to do a video at first show what we got. Yeah. There's another one right here. So, some right here. And if you have a coach, these are the things you want to look for. I'll make sure these are all sealed. 
Make sure your stitching's okay on the top here. This looks pretty well. We're going to end up wrapping all this. We put wraps on it. Before we do anything, we protect the coach. So, the, um, obviously the gutter wasn't sealed here. You can see some water coming down that way. But we've got a, already, we've got the spline coming out of this and the stitching's coming loose right here. So. down here a little bit just stressed out a bit I'll check the other one while we're here I haven't even seen the inside but I'm sure it's nice ah, this one's already torn he already knows about this one but this is something he said he could handle anyways here we get all this how should you want to check check your caulking up here you want to make sure these things are sealed up I mean that's what kills them that little bit of moisture that gets in there and it starts to become a problem so Get a little a little fibers on there. Looks like the stitching's coming loose on it. I don't like the way they did this because now all the water sits in here, all the, the snow will sit in here, all the ice, it'll all just sit there. And even the water, if it doesn't drain out quick enough and it kind of collects, and when it does turn to ice, it kind of expands. It'll put pressure on these. Uh, that's just a terrible design. This really, in my opinion, should have been up here more so it ramps it down. But we're not going to change all that, but that's what that's what I would have done. But they may not have the stock in there to do it. So whoever designed this, they should have designed it to come up. Just bring that rail up to here so it's up this way. So everything will come off the coach, uh, off the awning, instead of just hanging there. That's the other thing you've got to consider when you have all that snow and ice and everything in there. You're going to have additional weight in there. And that's another problem. So uh, now I don't know if there's any stock in there. So. All right, let's get to work to this part. And we'll show you what's underneath a pinnacle. All right, so here on our pinnacle, what they did is they slobbered all this caulking on here. See it? And what they do is they paint it afterwards. This is the color underneath. So we have to take all this up. You're going to see all that gray all through there. We're going to see what we can do to kind of doll that up so we don't see it. Maybe put a, a decal or something on it, you know, some vinyl. I don't know. We'll do something like that. So we're trying to get all that together. Take time to get the roof up. So it just tears right up. I'm gonna come over here. We gotta screw down. This is plywood. So I wanna see what's underneath it. You know, in the sense of uh, like how bad it is, if it's glued or not. But look at this big gap. This is called backer rod. That's what that is. I use it for uh, like concrete joints and stuff. And what it is, it fills it up. So if you have a gap. But that's how far they missed. This was supposed to be butt together. This is a break. And it was supposed to be butted together. So I don't know how much we got on each side. And hopefully that's a doubler right there. So that kind of throws us off. I mean, you'd figure a coach like this that they'd be able to get the framing right. So evidently somebody did not. But we'll see what the problem is. And then we're going to try and salvage these shoulders. They're really nice. We're going to see if we can salvage them. But they're not even. So if you kind of look, you can see this one. Is rising up. Let's see. Here, I'll show you that. Hold on here. You see the gap under there? See it? See the gap under there? All right. So that one's there, but if you come down here, this one's proper. That's sitting tight, but this sheet is not. It's got a bubble. So right here, then it just starts to kind of come up and around, and that's kind of a problem because it just um, it doesn't. It's not a smooth transition. And the other thing that it's doing is it's throwing our gutter line off because that is too high. So now that being higher, it raised it up. This is our gutter line right here where the tape is. And there's a three quarters of an inch difference in this from here to here from back there because it's puckered up. Well, what did they do? They put everything on and they painted around it. So if we do lift it up, you're gonna have more of that gray if we try to balance it out. So the only thing we're gonna be forced to go with the old with the old line here you know and you may see a little difference a little you know looking a little wider than in other areas but it's better to do that because you're not gonna be able to paint all this so uh, that's about all we can do for that we've got some this is where the solar was there was just a little solar boot there and then right here was some more wires which I thought were plumbing they just disguised it under the plumbing cap so we're just gonna put them back in and we'll have that so they can access it. We'll probably put another plumbing there just as an access for them and uh, in case they need it. 
for whatever but if they ever go to put solar or anybody does we really need to prep the roof you can't just put it down to the roof like the other people do and how they screw it to it you know, that's that's a leak that's a leak waiting to happen so we got everything else like you said pulled up and uh we're trying to rip the roof up just give me an update so now that we got some of this loosened up you can see how nice and clean that looks no glue there's no glue on this you can see some of the glue right here right there that's it they got no glue on the shoulder they just pulled it over and tucked it behind the, the turn bar or the gutter but that's why it come out so easy that's why it's so nice and clean so there isn't a lot of glue on this thing anyways i usually get these things in kits and they come up real easy you know pretty much so this is supposed to be their brand of tpo that's what it is but it's uh real thin you know you see i got some edges that look like they're a little heavier but it doesn't take much to pull this up you wouldn't be able to do this without roof it won't come up once i get them down that's why we're so particular in the way they go down because you get a bubble in it and you have to take it up you don't want to come up it is a lot of work if you can so all right well i wanted to show you that too now you can still see how prominent that was on there that little well we got the roofing or the decking off of our pinnacle it is done off we cleared it out got all the insulation out you can see that so what we're going to do is get all this cleaned up now what we're looking for is just anything that may compromise these wires at all looking down here we may put some loom in there because i can see an aluminum frame down there and i don't want these wires rubbing and getting chafed so we may do that and then uh, also we're going to be looking for the trunk lines right here we're going to look at all these joints and i want to make sure they're all sealed real tight even the other one on the other side over there so we're going to be looking for that we're making sure these trusses are okay these are actually a better built truss than i've ever seen on a uh on a coach most of the time like you don't have this center strut you're usually in here on these he's got they've got them on both sides then the uh, the only thing I don't like is I've got a box sitting up on top of my trunk line and that's foam the wire alone will chafe and cut a hole in this so you can imagine what that block's going to do so we got to get that out of the way we're going to get these blocks out they're not necessary to be in there they may have bridged it up or something maybe to hold the wire I don't know but I only see these two right here I don't see them anywhere else so we're going to take those out well, like I said, we just go down here and we check everything. Now, all these satellite wires, this satellite was down here, right in here somewhere. So, we're going to move these wires over here, the satellite wires. I didn't want them running on the roof. I'm going to bring them back up underneath. I do not know what these wires are. Don't know where they go to. So, we're just going to put them back and then I'll make a boot up in here. And if they need to access it, they can, they can do that. So, like I said, we'll look for all the tape. All the wires just make sure everything looks kind of the way it should you know i don't understand that mess wrapped around the truss there so what i don't like is when they get all stressed out you know, so i want to make sure they got room to move we have got kind of go around you kind of do all this nonsense and just see if they move if they're real tight we want to try and get some slack on them or possibly you know if it's worth it to reroute them so but everything overall looks pretty well you know i don't see too much gapping in the air conditioning trunk lines i don't see that they had three h decking on here it wasn't glued down but what they did have underneath here was a radiant barrier sheathing and that's just um it's, it's just like an aluminum foil over the roof so we're going to put it back but we're going to put it in the bay instead of on the truss because we're going to glue these down so we'll glue this and we'll staple everything they screwed it down uh, I don't recommend screwing into this type of truss because what eventually what happens is you can see like that's not terrible But if you put enough in there, you'll start to split the wood you see So this one just got the edge, but it's not all split up But if you had put more screws in then it could have split so They say don't put a lot of screws in it because it'll split. Okay. Well, here's an idea Why don't you you know if you staple it down? The staple is going to hold incredibly strong and especially if you glue it so you're not going to have any issue you're not going to have any issue of splitting them either so if you're doing a camper this isn't a diy video but 
if you can get a tip or two out of this thing cool but don't screw them all down you start throwing a lot of screws in there and say hey you know because really you do need quite a few screws in here because that energy when these things rack and twist and flex that energy has to go somewhere so if you do not glue it down that energy is going to the screws and the fasteners so if you have a few screws in there that means those few screws are taking a lot of the energy the more screws you have in there then it divides it up where all of them are taking a little bit of energy instead of a couple taking a lot of energy that being said when you put the glue down and you use uh, an adhesive on here then that will allow the coach to flex but it'll stay bonded and it takes all the energy off of their fasteners screws staples whatever it may be so now the staples and the fasteners are doing their job holding it down and then the glue is preventing the the rack the unnecessary rack that it does not need you see so and depending on the glue you use like this is just a foam adhesive this is going to be more of a stifling type glue meaning that's hard so when it gets hard and it doesn't have any flex to it I wouldn't recommend that we use a urethane adhesive and that has a lot of flexibility to it so it would be it, it will absorb more but it, the coach is still going to want to rock a little bit and flex we're just trying to curb some of that energy from tearing anything apart so but uh, that's what we got so far we are going to uh, like I said vacuum it out check everything make sure we're happy with it and then we close her back up but this had 3 8 decking on it and we're putting on half inch so then we got to clean up all our shoulders to get everything all done all right let us get to work so this already had a chafed hole so what we did is we put a piece of metal under it like this and now we're just going to tape it on there so it doesn't move that's all but we taped this on there so it wouldn't move we kind of defeat the purpose if it just fell off so that's what we're doing with these you know like you said checking everything else out make sure it's copa static because i got the same thing here i don't know why those are there but like you said we're going to get rid of those and see why it's doing it i think it may just the only reason I could think they'd have that there is to keep this trunk line stable so it doesn't move. That's the only thing I could think of. We're going to pop them out. If that's the case, I'll put something else in there, even some foam or whatever. And so the purpose of these in there it was, see how that pops? That's what it's for, to keep it stable because there's an outlet right here where that screw is. We're going to put that back down and we're going to use foam instead. I don't want to use the blocks because they're going to poke a hole through everything. So we're going to make foam ones up. And we'll keep them in. We'll put them sporadically like they did to hold that in place. And we got another one of these going on the other side. Another one of those protectors. And we're we're going to go around everywhere there's a wire run. If we can either run the wire differently, we will. If we can't, then we'll put that. We're going to unplug this. We'll unplug this and run it underneath. On this one, we will. We'll see what we can do with the others. Well, we have got the insulation put back in. You can see we're putting the radiant barrier in. We're cutting it and we're putting it in the bay because we got a glue on here the only way to get it is all glued is that I have to glue this down and glue on top of that to make sure all that sticks probably isn't going to work so the theory is this is supposed to reflect some UV light that's the whole idea to this sheet however if you look on uh, IT tech LT, LT tech excuse me LT tech or solar board those are sheathings that have the radiant barrier on the opposite side of it and if you read the installation on it it'll tell you to have a a cavity from the top from the foil to whatever about three quarters of an inch so you're supposed to have a drop down that'll work more efficiently so it says so that being said just laying this on top would not have as much effect as if you actually drop it inside you know theoretically according to what they're saying so but the uh, product that we use the roofing is a commercial grade product and it has you know properties built into it to reflect UV light it's a much better product than you gotta give this cheap RV stuff that's for sure because you can imagine how hot those flat roofs would get in the summertime with on a commercial roof so that's what we're doing now we're getting prepped up we're gonna deck it and then we're gonna get this uh, whole thing put all back together and we'll keep you updated right, we're getting the roof deck all down look at all the glue we used so we found out the problem, that big gap that I showed you up here earlier. See right here? Now what they did, when they put these trusses in, if you look, the truss is square. This way, it's almost like if you put a level on here, it's true. And it can't be true because there's camber to the roof, so it actually should be tilted. So that's why they had that big gap in there. If they had tilted it, 
to accommodate for the rake in the roof. It had to be square with the roof ceiling, not plumb or true. So that's what caused it. So we've been working it. We had to extend one of them so we could get it. And we worked it over. But, uh, we're going to fill it now. We still got a good break on them. We got it all stable down. You can see all the glue we used. So, you can in here. But this was, I think this was where the original gap was, right in here. So we got that a little closer and tighter. And then, like I said, we're going to load it. We got a strip going on here anyway, so it's going to be just fine. But that's what, that's what the problem was. They didn't accommodate for the rake in the roof. So it should have been square, get my hand right, like this. It should have been square with that instead of this way. I don't know. Yeah, man, my cuticles are terrible. All right, onward and upward. So now that's what we're doing. So we're going to fill whatever we have to. We fill it with some foam. And once we get all that in there, just make it nice and tight. This is actually a foam adhesive. It's not just a backer rod like they use. So we're actually gluing these two pieces together. And shoulders go on. We're ready to rock and roll. Oh, we got our shoulder on. Then we got all our strips put across. We got all that completed. And now what we're going to do is get the roofing on here. And we're going to start gluing her down. Well, we got the roof all rolled out. This membrane, it wants to lay two-dimensionally. So you got this coming up this way, then it levels off, then it goes back down, and it's got camber. So we're going to have some burps on here. So we'll bring it over on the shoulder. It's a structured membrane. Structured means you can see the weave in there. That's a part of the structure, so it's really rigid. So we'll straighten this out, and we'll put a little weld in here. We'll pull it down and tuck it. And then uh, now what we're doing is just rolling it. So they kind of got ahead of me. You know, I mean, we were jamming out to God smack. I mean, the shop was just rocking. I turn around and they already had it done. I was working on something else. So, but uh, maybe a couple little burps on this side, possibly. We're gonna try and obviously pull out as many as we can. You know, see what we can do. And uh, just get it to lay down. That's why we're rolling it so much. Cause this, this one, like you said, it's got some good camber to it. So, all right. Now we get the holes cut and get the, uh, Get the curbs on and get them welded in. Well, we are done with our pinnacle. She's ready to go. There we go, October of 22. We've got these, the ladders, when we put these ladders on, first off, we take these ladders off, and then we check all the bolts in the side here, make sure everything's nice and tight and glued and keep the water out of the actual ladder. And then we make these boots. These move around a lot. And that's usually where we get leaks. Yeah, they start breaching into the ladder on the corners. So we uh, got the stands on the back. And uh, we've got, now this is a 60 mil commercial grade TPO. And that being said, it is a very rigid type of material. Super strong. But some of the things that we cannot control or some like the, we got a little bit of ripples right here this coach is basically like trying to wrap a golf ball it's cambered all the way there's not one flat spot where it comes levels off or anything it just it's arch all the way so like I said and then you got the shoulder here so you're gonna end up with some rippling right there there's just nothing we can do about it so this is the material right here it's a 60 mil this is a commercial grade roof uh, material TPO, which is a thermoplastic. You're going to find this on a hotel, a library, an office building. But those little squares that you're looking at, there's a built-in mesh in there. And that's what gives it its strength against uh, tree branches and uh, hail, that type thing. So, but, uh, so we've got a couple of things that we were, uh, would have liked to have seen it lay out a little better, but we really struggled to try to get this one as tight as we did. And like again, it's it's a commercial grade roof. It's not a the other roof systems, the other membranes they use are so light and so flimsy that they'll just uh, you know lay right over and there's no structure to them. And that's where that tear came from. I think it was over this way, and that was one of the reasons. Also, they never did glue the shoulder either. So, but anyhow, we've got our stance right there. That just gives the air conditioner some balance. Then we put these. Uh, we have a uh, counter flash right here that goes over on the curb that's underneath. There's a piece that we, I built in what's called counter flash. And I'll show you that in a minute. But this piece goes over that counter flash. 
So when it rains, all the water run down, go underneath, and up underneath there is just a foam gasket. So without this front piece, if you're traveling in the rain, all that water will be blown back into the gasket, and we don't want to have that. So the uh, you see we got the satellite all put back together, and the uh, that's all heat welded as well. That's a custom curb I had to make on that one. And if you look on the edge there, right there, that little overhang, that's a counter flash. That's what it is, and I built it into everything. And what it does is it, if the water starts running this way in the rain, you're traveling, it's going to hit up here and wash out. It does. It minimizes erosion effect. Put it that way. And, and typically, we'll, all they want to do is put these mounted, take the components, satellite, take the vents, take everything. They just squash it to the roof, run the screws around, and put self-leveling on. That doesn't work. So you end up with basically an erosion effect. And again, that's something you don't want to have. Uh, that's what causes them to wear out. So on the side here, we've got uh, the insert trim that we use. This insert trim goes in and over this. And then obviously we got a lick of caulking on here. We got two strikes going all the way down here. We've got our plumbing in here. You see we got the vents, the covers, blah, blah, blah. This is a solar fan. So what happens with these lenses, when you put them on, now you get into the, like, the weather now. It's cooler in the morning. And you may get some frost or you may get some condensation up here, right? Some frost up there. And then the sun comes up and it'll start obviously evaporating off that frost but what it does on the inside when you're up inside it'll cause that to condensate and then it'll roll down and then a lot of times we'll find damage in the ceiling or we'll find damage along the roof deck so what this is is a solar fan so this will kick on and once this kicks on when the sun comes up to evaporate off of here that's the draw it'll draw the air through we made a trough in there and it'll go up over the inner lens and then it comes back down and it goes out. So like you said, that's just a solar fan. So you don't have to control it. You don't have to come out here and turn the fan on all the time. So same thing with this air conditioner. You've got the stands in the back to give it some balance. We've got the counter flash up there and got your antenna. So um, that's about it. She is ready to go. We want to thank this customer for coming all the way from Ontario, Canada. We are honored that he came all this way to have us do the roof. And uh, we look forward to seeing them again for the inspections. Um, the inspections we like to have see. I like to see these 30 to 60 days. We do put a, a patch, a patch kit, yes, but it's a care package we put in there, so folks can actually go and check it themselves. There should be a, a short clip clip at the end of the video, and um, that'll uh, kind of give an idea of what we look for. And we also leave with product and checker tools and things like that. But we want to see, we like to see these come back, you know, 30 to 60 days, you know, 60 being the maximum after we're, we get them completed for the first initial because it's new, it's twisting, it's flexing. We want to make sure everything's staying the way it should. Then after that, it's annual. Uh, to clean these roofs, you can use any dish soap. You could use uh, Simple Green. Yeah, they're easy to wash. You can pressure wash them. So... All right, well, the, uh, and then that over there is the solar. So that was already there, so we just put that back on. Again, we, we uh, thank this customer for bringing it all the way to us. We see his all package. All right. So in our care package, we have caulking. We got primer. We have got two patches. Those are heat patches. We got a patch peel and stick patch. We got a checker tool. We've got a magnet, and the rest of this is just pens, keychains, brush, nozzle. Okay, so if we have a hole in the roof, it will simulate a hole. We can do hole simulations. We say we got a hole there. Here's your tree branch come through, and you're like, oh man, I got a hole in my roof. It's leaking. What you want to do? And it's raining out. Right now it's raining, you're like, crap, I gotta stop that leak. You wanna get in there, and if you can't get that nozzle in there, don't worry about it. Make it a little bigger. What you're trying to do, you need to get up underneath the roofing, like this. This is what we need to do, get up underneath the roofing.
Then you're gonna take and you're gonna put this up inside there and you're gonna squeeze, 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 squeeze. Hopefully this thing is plugged up. There it goes. You just squeeze, squeeze. You wanna try and get up underneath this part too. Squeeze up underneath there. Put some more underneath there. Well, we are getting this thing all boogered up. But then what we're gonna do, you're gonna push it together. See how it is out? That's sealed. You're done. This is a moisture cured product. So what? It's a hot mess. Looks terrible. Who cares? Keep the water out. So now, the next day, we're going to go up there, and that's going to be cured looking like that. So we're going to take a knife, and you just shave it down. You just shave it down with a knife. I'm just going to obviously wipe this off. Now you say, hey, I want something a little better than that. So what we're going to do is get some cleaner. This is a terrible rag. You get another one. You got one on you? Oh, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag, get a rag. Hey, what are you doing? What are you going to talk about, man? Nope, just leave it alone. Oh, leave it alone right now. Right. We're recording now? Are we on? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so now we cleaned it off with a knife. I just washed that off because it's still wet. Take that off. So now we got a patch. This is a peel and stick patch. We're going to take that. We're going to center it over there. Just take a pen and go around like this. I like to kind of put a dash like that so I know who's where, what, and where and how. So now there, there's what I got. So in the package, we got primer. We also have a brush. You're gonna take that, you're gonna go all inside the square. You also gotta go outside this square about three eighths of an inch. Outside about three eighths of an inch or so. But once you get that, there's a film on the back. You peel the film, now you know which side you are, see, because there's, there's your marks. And you peel that film back. I get the fingers, fingers in there to get a get the film off of this thing. This is just a regular roof tape. That's all it is. We put them in all the care packages. Get that daggone thing off of there. Probably need some fingernails. Probably help. Uh, come on. There it is. Okay. Oop. Hey, huh? Hey, there it is. Now you got the film. We take that film. So now we're gonna line it back up with this. We already got the primer under there. You just peel the film back, and as you do, you just rub it down like this. Sometimes that film will get a little stuck in there. This is just a butyl. You just kind of try to keep it as even as you can and flat as you can. Boom, you're done. There it is. So now, out here. This is where your primer is. You put the primer on there. You got primer there, and now you're going to put primer here. You want to prime all this area with your brush. Prime all that. Then you're going to come back. Once you get it all primed, then you're going to put a little bit of caulking on it, just like this. That simple. It doesn't all sit in there. You can always take your finger and go around it if you want. We're trying to obviously stop a leak and make one of the, there's going to be a, a little more permanent of a patch than just that that plug that we did when it was raining. So now that we get that all done, what the whole purpose of it is this part here, this part underneath here, that's a butyl. When the sun hits that, if you didn't have the caulking on there, it will cause it to release and curl up just like I'm doing here. And it'll start coming loose. That's why you need the primer. That's why. When you prime it, you're going to prime on top of this because nothing will stick to it. Nothing, the caulking will not stick to this patch and it won't stick to the roof unless you use the primer. That's how you do a patch. Ta-da! All done.